All right, thank you. Um, now I'm going to pull up a PowerPoint here that I made that will help explain what I'm doing. Can you all see that? Anyone there who, who I can't see it? Not yet. Not yet. Uh, I'll share, right? No. So just, per, yeah, we can see it. So you press share. And also maybe ask people to mute for now while you're yeah, recording, uh, while you're presenting. Yeah, everyone mute. What, what's that share screen? In the middle, right in the middle, the green. Oh, thank you. Yep, yep, yep. Okay, there we go. Thank you, yeah, yeah. You're welcome. <laughs> Haven't done this for a while. Here's my stuff yeah. now. Now Great. you're oh, talking. Yeah, I see it. Okay, there we go. And uh, making the law of attraction work for you. Sometimes it takes more than just being spiritual, as we all know. Perhaps you're someone who has been meditating for many years, has been doing affirmations, has been going to all the seminars about power of the mind, has a vision of what your perfect life could be like, has been practicing all the right techniques to attract the perfect life. Perhaps you're also someone who feels stuck in the wrong job. Who oh, I've been there for, I, I don't know how long, since, since my first job back in the 70s, I, uh, I felt I've pretty much always been stuck in the wrong job, you know? So yeah, yeah that's me right there, pulling my hair out. <laughs> and feels like you aren't making enough money. Well, it, you know, if you're stuck in, in the wrong job, you probably won't be making enough money. Um, <laughs> that's just the way it is. Uh, wants to make a difference in the world. Yeah, how 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 many of, of us feel like we're really making a difference in the world? You know, or are are we just ma ma making someone in the corporate ladder wealthier b because uh, of our work? Someone ra raised their hand there. That that was Rachel. Yeah, uh, uh, Rachel, did, did you have a question? No, Dave, I was just agreeing. I, I want to make a difference in this world as well. Thank you. Yes, all, all, all of us do. Yeah, right. But yeah, are, are we doing that on, on our jobs right, right now? Or, or are we, we just doing so, something to get, get a paycheck, pay the, the bills, you know? Or are not in a, a, a good, good relationship or perhaps you aren't in any relationship at all or are not completely happy or satisfied with your life. What if you could be, could be successful? What if you could be doing what you really love? What if you could be in a perfect relationship? What if you could become completely happy and satisfied and ha have that feeling like her lo looking in, in the mirror at yourself there thinking I am enough, you know? Well, uh, once you got that feeling in your mind that I am enough and you can maintain that feeling over in the, a long period of time, even through the ups and downs, then uh, you, you're gonna have a pretty good life. My story, there there I was quite, quite a bit younger. That, that was back in the 70s, I think, or may, maybe the 80s, or yeah, pro probably the mid 70s anyway. Uh, I, I struggled with ADHD and stuttering both. Uh, I had a re really bad case, case of an ADHD. I was uh, just re really wired all the, the uh, time. You know, I couldn't sit still, couldn't re remember anything, couldn't focus. A and that was what ca caused the stuttering, actually, was the ADHD. Uh, I was always stuck in the wrong jobs. And... I was always stuck in the wrong relationships too. And I felt like life had no meaning. Uh, what changed in my life, and there's a more current picture there. I became a guided meditation leader, probably about uh, several years ago, which led to, I became a hypnotherapist and after that, well, which is kind of very similar to leading guided meditation, by the way. And then uh, I, I studied 
QHHT, which, which stands for uh, Quantum Healing uh, Hypnosis Technique, and RTT, well, which stands for Rapid Transformational Therapy, and EFT, well, which stands for um, Emotional Freedom Technique. And uh, suddenly I became a lot more clear and focused in my thinking and my speaking became clear and more focused also. Um, I started to get clients and started to feel like I was living my passion. And here's a helpful tip. Affirmations and positive thought aren't enough for most of us. Quite, quite a few of us, uh, so some of us need more than, than, than that affirmations and positive thought since we have had emotional blocks from childhood who have helped that, that have held us back and quite a few of uh, uh, studies have shown have had those emotional blocks from childhood you know uh, no, no one get, gets off easy you know but most of us have had par parents who um, had a, kind of a rough childhood themselves and, and they, they they kind of learned um, not not so not so good parenting techniques from their parents, and and they kind of dump that on us, you know. Mm -hmm. I, I found that uh, uh, rapid transformational therapy and emotional freedom technique sessions help us remove emotional blocks. Sorry, and, Dave. Can I just suggest that everyone just mutes because <laughs> there's some noise coming from oh, somewhere. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. I don't know if you can see. All right, and looks like everyone is muted now. Thank you. And um, the adverse childhood experiences study. This this is some, something that came out back in nineteen uh, ninety eight. It it was a joint venture between um, the Kaiser Permanente Insurance Company. And the centers for for um, disease control. They did a, a study on responses to a questionnaire given to policyholders on the level of ch trauma they experienced when they, they were children, and they they got about seventeen thousand responses back, or they no they um, sent out seventeen thousand re 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 responses, and they got a, a about. 70 per percent of them back, which to, to for a survey is a really good response rate to get 70 percent back. And yeah, over 70 percent of the policyholders responded back, indicating they had experienced some degree of trauma as children. This indicated that there was a far higher incidence of trauma in childhood uh, in uh, society. Than was previously thought. We 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 had some ideas, you know, that a lot of people um, that, that may have been experiencing trauma back in childhood. We didn't have any, any uh, statistics on, on on that until uh, 1998, well, when the survey was done, indicated that quite a, a, a few of, uh, of those 17,000 who the survey went out to had some uh, trauma back in their childhood. So it's pretty much pandemic in, in our, our culture and pretty much all cultures that are fast paced because uh, that's what causes trauma is, um, well, well, that's one of the things that caused trauma is a fast paced lifestyle. Uh, the study also indicated that the trauma experienced in childhood tends to follow us throughout life and affects us both emotionally, mentally, and physical, physically, and may be a factor in our premature death. Let me, uh, here's the uh, pyramid here. Uh, it it start, starts with uh, the adverse childhood experiences early in life. Uh, that's the base of the pyramid, uh, shown that they're in kind of um, pink and, and, and then one, one step up in the pyramid is di disrupted neuro di di development, which is one more way, one more way of saying ADHD or ADD. 
to either of those two things and what one step up, which is shown in purple in, in the pyramid, is social, emotional, and cognitive impairment, which is caused by the disruptive uh, neuro de uh, development, the um, part of the pyramid below that. And one step up in the pyramid shown in blue is the adoption of health risk behaviors, such as drinking or drug use or um, all, all sorts of be, uh, behaviors with which are not healthy, eating the wrong kind of foods, um, put, putting on too much weight, um, all sorts of things that pe people do that aren't good for them, aren't, aren't healthy for, for them, but people do those things so they're trying to reduce the stress in their life and that there's some good ways to reduce stress and some not, not so good ways to re reduce stress also. Yeah, I see a, a hand up there, Margaret. Yeah, do you have a question? I think she's saying she doesn't have audio. So Margaret, you need to look for it in the bottom left corner, I believe it should say um, connect to audio device or something like that. Okay. So I'm guessing it's just that. Uh -huh. Yeah, you, oh, you, there, you, she's you, connecting. Cool. She's, she, she's connecting. Okay. Thank you. Okay. We're good now. And the, the next step up in, in the pyramid is disease, disability, and social problems. So, um, yeah, then, uh, poverty is one, one thing. You know, what, when you aren't working and when, when, when you aren't healthy, then, then that's uh, going to cause poverty right there. And early death it is, it is the final outcome of the adverse uh, childhood trauma, which is the bottom of the pyramid here. So, so that's what the, um, they, they came up with uh, in, in, in that study called the Adverse Childhood Experiences Study back in 1998. And then I came up with some um, information from, from the HeartMath Institute out in uh, Boulder Creek, uh, California. They, they studied th this stuff also. And the, they said that we, we have an optimal level of uh, arousal, which is the, in this green zone here. And mo most people stay w within the green zone. If, if you go up into the uh, yellow zone or, or the orange zone and the red zone, then you're start, starting to get too aroused, well, which causes stress. If you go down into the gray zone or the uh, dark gray, gray zone, then then you're not getting uh, enough arousal, which causes um, depression, um, loneliness, um, feeling like life, life has just passed you by, you know? And the uh, research institute known as the HeartMath Institute also did studies on our level of arousal, how it can get out of the optimal range. In hyper arousal, we become overstimulated, which puts us into a high degree of stress. In hypo arousal, we are understimulated, which is also stressful. And hyper arousal of our nervous system can lead to chronic anxiety in uh, anger, hypo arousal can lead to sadness and depression. We learn to co-regulate -re our response to stress through close associations with friends or family. Assuming that we're, we're close to our friends and family, if we aren't, then, then they aren't going to be able to help us too much. Uh, we can also learn to self-regulate our response to stress through meditation or affirmations or being in nature or hundreds of uh, other techniques which can keep us in that green zone there where we're still safe. Now, however, people who have had excess stress or trauma early in childhood, their window of tolerance, which is the green zone there, is very narrow. 
and I said, said that here, here again, those who have had a great deal of trauma in childhood will have a narrow optimal response to stress. They will be hyper aroused or hypo aroused much more quickly. Hyper arousal can lead to anxiety, panic, hypervigilance, hypervigilance, restlessness, and aggression, also called the fight or flight response. Up in the red zone there, where it also shows uh, anxiety, anger, panic, hypervigilance, restlessness, and aggression. Or that they, they can go down into the gray zone there, which is shutdown, depression, emotional numbing, lethargy, disassociation, and also sadness and loneliness. Hypo and arousal can lead to shutdown, depression, emotional numbing, lethargy, and disassociation. Some of the tools for self regulation which will keep you in the green zone there. Even if you have a, a, a narrow window um, of re response or uh, narrow or window of tolerance uh, to uh, stress, but which people who have had a uh, traumatic ch um, childhood will, will have kind of, kind of a narrow window of tolerance more, more than the average person. Once the client learns to use the tools of self-regulation on a consistent basis, then they will no longer be hyper-aroused or hypo-aroused. There are numerous tools for self-regulation. However, clients who have had trauma, which began in childhood, um, some form of trauma therapy well, will be the, 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 the only thing that will help them. Some forms of trauma therapy, um, like uh, rapid transformational therapy or e emotional freedom technique or several others. Uh, since most people who have had a stressful childhood will have been emotionally dysregulated for such a long period of time, it may also take them a lo long time to learn to stay within that green zone there. Uh, the window of tolerance, trauma therapy, RTT and EFT. Some clients who have had a great deal of trauma early in life will need trauma therapy, which gets straight to the root of the problem. Where did, did the problem start? Usually back in childhood. Rapid transformational therapy is one form of therapy that I've been trained in. Rapid transformational therapy is a combination of hypnotherapy and psychotherapy. Uh, emotional freedom technique is also a form of therapy I've been trained in and it'll get to, to the root of the problem also. Uh, emotional freedom techniques works by neutralizing the emotions caused by trauma. Uh, anyone have an, any questions so far? If not, I'll, I'll move on. Uh, as an RTT practitioner and an EFT practitioner and a hypnotherapist, I can help you also. I can show you how to live the perfect life. Sign up for a group session with me or a one-on-one -on -one session also. And uh, let me show you what I can do for, for you. There's my email address. And that's my presentation. Does anyone have any questions? I do, I do. Yeah. Um. I have uh, been following the research with um, trauma, uh, specifically uh, more so with uh, Basil van der Kolt and Gabor Mate, and also um, the idea of neuroplasticity. Yeah, that our brains can change. Mm -hmm, right. And so I'm, and I did, I was not surprised. I knew that Gabor Mate was been very vocal um, in his talks and in writing about being um, his uh, experience with um, his family being under siege with um, the Germans and the Nazi occupation. 
And then Basil also had shared, I think that his uncle was a Nazi that was active in his life. And my dad was born in Ohio, in Niles, Ohio. When he turned three, his mom took him and his stepbrother to visit the grandmother before she died. And while they were there, the Nazis showed up and took over their town. It had nothing to do with their religion or politics. It was just a place they wanted to take over. Mm -hmm. So because of circumstances and getting the older brother out sooner, meanwhile, my grandfather was here trying to do what he could do. Um, my dad didn't get back till he was 20. And so I realized, you know, that I'm, he was a victim. He was a victim of the Nazi occupation. And I am still, as an adult, uh, just recently feeling the ramifications of, of, um, how that impacted him as an adult and as a parent and it was a little unsettling because I recently spent uh, some time with him while I was getting training for a job situation and my job coach uh, overheard how he was addressing me and talking to me and as soon as I was able to follow up with him, he said, Margaret, you need to get out of there. Yeah. And the training that I was at, they pulled me aside on the second day and they said, how you doing? And I knew something was up. And they said, uh, where are you staying? Who are you staying with? And then there was some uh, challenges with my dad the night before. And I was really surprised of how much that still affects me. And when I asked the job developer the week later, like, why is it that you said that to me? What happened that you, you know, immediately said that? He said, as long as I've known you and we've worked together, I've never heard that much stress in your voice before. Mm -hmm. And uh, I guess I, I know that we revert back to who we were as children when we're with our parents or in the home, you know, of our or origin. Yet yeah. it's been a bit much for me to swallow that this is still more than I realize. Mm -hmm. uh, but I have had people tell me that after I've spent time with family, that it takes a while for me to come back to myself. Mm -hmm. so it's kind of hard to see ourselves you know from outside of ourselves and my sister is a very uh challenging person for me as well and we're very much very very we're very very different mm -hmm. so I've been better at keeping boundaries and cutting her you know just cutting the line and we're mostly in touch mostly to oversee just his health and well-being mm -hmm. yeah. but it's this is just in the last um couple of weeks that that this has come down on me and i know when i'm looking at your chart right now that i have no doubt that a lot of the health issues that i have are a result of the stress and I was told that I'm, I was diagnosed ADD, ADHD, and they said, it's not the common functioning of how the brain is. Yours is because of early childhood trauma. Yeah. So yeah. it's probably because of his, his means of functioning as, as a human being and also as a parent. Plus there's, I wanted you, I wanted to know if you were going to talk on how that trauma even transcends DNA. So that's, that's it. Thanks. Mm, okay. Yeah. Um, wow. Yeah. Tra trauma does follow, follow us uh, through, through, throughout life. If, if we've had a, a lot, lot of trauma back, back from childhood, there, there are things that we, we can do to uh, o overcome that childhood trauma, but, but it does take uh, a, a great deal of 
self-healing, uh, a, a, a great deal of trauma therapy of one form or a, a another, plus doing all, all, all the affirmations and the meditation and all those, those, those uh, other things. I think we, we have to do the trauma therapy and we, we, we also have to do the meditation and the affirmations and all that and other stuff too, because we, we have to learn to keep ourselves calm and we, we have to learn to keep on ourselves positive because as the um, uh, st studies show there, we have kind of a narrow w window of tolerance and we, we could get stressed out more easily than what, what the average person on the street can. So we, we have to keep our, um, our, our self um, in, in that um, green range, you know, when, where we feel safe uh, and keep, keep ourselves out of either the red zone or, or the gray zone where we, we can start getting, you know, getting in fight or flight or, or, or start getting depressed. And but both of those things take a lo lot of work. I uh, hope that uh, answered your question there. Can I make a comment on the last question on the, the genes and transcending trauma, transcending genes? Yeah, okay. I don't know if Margaret is still there, actually. Uh, uh, yeah, she's still there. Okay. I'm here. I'm here. Okay. Um, yeah, I, I, I just kind of noticed, not, not just, but um, I just wanted to comment on the last um, part of your question which was trauma, about trauma transcending genes. I think, I'm not an expert in this specific field, but if you read up on epigenetics, there's a lot of research done how trauma affects the expression of different genes and how basically the environment determines what, you know, it, what you have a pre the predisposition for um, genetically. And so ADHD actually is a great example of that. Um, where there is, it is known that there is a genetic predisposition. Um, however, it is my belief that it's primarily the environment that determines that. I was also diagnosed with ADD, ADHD uh, late in life, I, um, like a few years ago, and it explained my whole life, my whole adult life, my, all my decisions. And also as a kid, I was that kind of, I was an A student, but very attentive, very distractible. So, and it makes sense in, in, in the light of uh, my childhood experiences, um, which, and I always thought, you know, like there was nothing, there's no abuse, there was no, you know, there's no severe trauma that happened to me in my childhood, but I always felt like there was something really bad happened. Um, I always felt like I was adopted almost by my parents. And so this, this disconnection always felt that um, uh, I didn't remember clearly my childhood. Um, and so, yeah, I had just, until I started this journey and actually pretty much until the diagnosis, which unlocked everything else for me to happen after, I had glimpses of my childhood. I didn't have a clear memory. I kind of had this vague idea that I, something ha must have happened to me around the age of three. Now, looking back, I think all it was was a disconnect from my parents, my mom being out of hospital, kind of separation, divorce, and what you call small t trauma. But yeah, all these things can affect you. And um, as Dave is saying, just have to keep keep searching, keep healing, um, which is why I don't know your background, Margaret, but yeah, which is why hypnotherapy, RTT, EFT, which is what Dave does, um, is extremely helpful and he's really good at, at that as well. Um, but yes, I, I, sorry, I kind of went, went <laughs> off tangent, um, but yeah, I just wanted to make a comment about the, the genes question. I hope that makes sense. Um, and yeah, the more you, the more you, the more you um, seek to understand what happened to you, even generations back, like you mentioned, the more you heal, um, the more easily you can reframe what happened to you. Um, yeah, and, and just heal from it, and literally change your past and um, heal from the past and just change your perception of what's happened. So with things like RTT, FT and so on. So yeah, that, 
that's what I wanted to add. Thank you. I hope that makes sense. Sorry, it's almost 1 a.m. for um, me here. <laughs> I hope I'm making sense. <laughs> oh, wow. I, 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 I suspected you were maybe across the pond. Yeah, What's that? Yes. Are you across the pond? I am. I'm in the UK. Yeah. <laughs> That's what I suspected. Um, I, uh, I have um, looked at epigenetics and uh, what was I going to say? Ja, uh, I just see two deer. So it just threw me off my brain <laughs> path. Um, I'm at a, I'm at a park. Uh, have you, so I, I myself in, in therapy and uh, 12 step and a codependency treatment. And I was surprised when Dave talked that when he mentioned things that we can do to help ourselves, I'm kind of surprised that he didn't mention maybe some of the um, less healthy behaviors that we may fall into and maybe that's on my mind more than it would have been um a couple months ago because i am in training to become um a, rec a peer recovery support specialist and i'm on a disability retirement for a genetic neurological condition from my mom's side and we think maybe I don't know how far back it goes, but my grandma had, um, uh, uh, da, 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 da. she had a condition. They think maybe started it. I don't know. Um, Charcot Marie Tooth. Anyhow, so, so I am looking even deeper into my behaviors that I've used to cope with mm, my challenges. And I've even done a, how do I say, cleaned up my, cleaned, I've been cleaning up more too, with just, um, you know, making amends to people and cleaning my slate and my side of the street, so to speak. Mm -hmm. um, and even as I'm sharing, you know, I did go through landmark education and after seven people, recommended it and I think you know like 14 years went by and and I did participate in a local program uh which I'm not going to mention because I don't recommend it and I don't endorse it but it was more emotional intelligence and uh I think that I've and I've had a lot of spiritual um direction training which I've appreciated and it's really really helped a lot but it just seems like it's an up and down path and right now I am abstinent with my primary addiction behaviors I think and grateful for that but I've also been challenged with a serious digestive issue since I had to start doing the paperwork and the legal work for my divorce so um, it just seems like it's always something. Mm. Mm. Yeah, well, well, there's often, I mean, it is always a process. Um, it's just that the approach that Dave is talking about, RGT, EFT, speeds up that process. That's what I personally believe in, because um, I do that as well. So but there, yeah, there's, there, there, I think there, there is always, there is always something, but there does come where you, you're at a completely different level. Have you tried RTT or EFT before? Um, I did a treat, I did a session with Dave. Was that the RTT, Dave? Okay. Yes, it was. Okay, I did that and I did listen to the, uh, you know, the, the every night um, video with that. And I've done some hypnosis work with a previous therapist. And actually she wanted to find if I've had abuse that I had blocked. And I didn't have anything come up, although I ended up going pre-birth, which was really interesting. Um, and the current therapist I'm working with, I recently asked her what's my diagnosis, of, you know, what she's doing with me, and she said PTSD. And 
I think, you know, it, life is a learning process and it's the bunny hop. And I've been, I've been considering writing for years, writing a book about that whole thing <laughs> because it's just what it is. And um, I, I do do mindfulness meditation and I've done um, Chiao Qigong, which was great. And, you know, I studied with a Native American, Black, black Feet, for two and a half years. I was under wing. And even on the edge of a Sufi community and other indigenous um, uh, teachers. Hmm. Yeah. Well, that's the journey. That's me. That's the personal development journey. And you keep looking until you find it. I think another session with Dave is in order. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. I, I would... why, why you think that those two are more beneficial, maybe compared to other things? Dave, you want to answer that? Yeah, uh, I found that uh, uh, both both uh, R and R RTT and uh, e in EFT are are geared uh, uh, towards hitting at, at at the root of, of the uh, problem. You know, where, whereas some some things, you know, they don't really really go back back to the root. You know, they they just uh, ch ch chop away the at at the the uh, branches of, of the uh, problem. You know, mm. but, but to solve the okay problem you know we we have to go back to the root like when did it first start you know and and once you find find, find out when when it first started you know and that give, give, it gives you insights to to your problem you know and, and then you you gain um strength uh over that problem you know because uh, uh knowledge is power you know and when, once you realize what when you're problems first started what caused that and why you know and you usually we find out you know when 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 we go back in, into to our childhood you know our uh ch childhood mind usually thinks it was my problem you know it was my problem my parents broke up uh the divorce it, it was my problem because my my dad couldn't keep his job uh it it was my um or, 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 the, or I was the cause, I, I should uh, say. I, I caused my family to be poor. I, I, I caused my fa family to, to be all stressed out. When we're, we're small children, you know, we, we tend to think that family problems were caused by us, you know, and that, yeah, yeah that kind of, kind of hurts us uh, throughout, throughout our life. E even though now, you know, we, we know as a adults, you know, we know the causes why our family what was having problems why uh, uh our, our family may, may have been in poverty why our parents bro broke up you know we we now know that that wasn't our fault you know but but when when we, we were children we tended to think it, it was our fault you know and that got, got stuck in in our subconscious mind and we, we have to learn to find that thought that that got stuck there decades in a ago you know and root that thought out you know which these therapies will, will do you know rtt and uh in eft you know yeah and yeah, um say something do you mind if i actually say something on this matter go ahead because I, I was in therapy from the age of 26 yeah hmm. my childhood trauma and I had some really bad coping mechanics uh, to the point of to having 27 years of being anorexic, which is a massively bad coping mechanic mm -hmm. for me believing that it was my fault that my parents don't get on. Yeah. All right. And not being even not even in the end being brought up by them. And I've done EFT, not only with Dave, but before that, that helped. But a lot of talk therapy doesn't work. Yeah, you're, because it does not rewire your yeah. brain. Right. And that's the main reason it needs to access where those things came from, like Dave and Dear said, 
and then rewire it. Rewire. And it is doesn't cause it's it doesn't cause damage. A lot of the what is the point of going to, into a therapy to relive it and not resolve it? There is no point. And I've I, if, if I'd have known and found out when this has been 33 years RTT in the making of it, it would have made my life completely different. Thank goodness. I mean, I'm not saying all the therapy didn't work because obviously it did. Uh, and because I, I I spent five years in AA from the age of 27 and sorted all that out. But I still had, I, you tend to transfer, or people can, I did, you transfer the trauma and you do something, you just develop another mechanic as a crutch. Mm. And it just takes up so much of your life. Yeah. When you could be having a really good life and be happy about it and realise that none of this was really, as a child, none of it can be, I, it took me a lot to get my head around this one, but as a child, no, you're not to blame for anything because that's where the thing responsible adult comes in. <laughs> Whether or not they had any kind of historical trauma, blah, 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 whatever, it does not make you responsible for that. You're not. You're there to deal with your own self and sort it out and let everybody else get on with their own. Because you're only there for you. You only have one life. You know, it's, it's and that, and, you know, uh, this is what I do as well. This is one of the reasons I chose to do it. Uh, because obviously I resolved other issues, but this made a massive difference to me. And I, I, I did some sessions and one thing before I went into it to see what a difference it would make first to see, to, to get really over. I had a massive abandonment issue that I couldn't, no matter what happened or what I did, I couldn't get rid of it. And I removed it in one session. So it, I'm, I don't, I can't stress highly enough for especially you've got you've got PTSD. Well, it works fantastically with CPTSD, which is a, 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 a bit of a different form of it. But I've worked with PTSD, and as I'm sure Dee and Dave have, because it's something that comes under. It's it's one of the very prevalent things that we work with, and we've had some astonishing results with people in one session. So that's just my, I'm, I'm sorry to interrupt, but I wanted to say that because it's resolved a lot of my issues, um, you know, in a, in a very, very fast amount of time. Okay, you then have to, you have to leave it and then you, you, your body and everything else comes up to speed. Yeah. I deal with gut health and the mind affects everything the mind runs the show as soon as you start having a bit more trauma anxiety about things most people gut goes haywire your brain goes off your gut goes out yep. it's very common yep. a lot of people who've got um unreleased trauma have crohn's colitis they're the people that i tend to deal with ibs doesn't matter it's just another bullshit term for some rubbish that's um they just can't sort out because it's in here. Well, and it's if, affecting every damn thing, every mm. part of you. Anyway, sorry, I'll shut up and let you get on. Sorry. <laughs> I, I, I just, I think that the thing with therapy, with talking therapy, I think is the first step. That's how I see it. It's great mm. for self awareness. Um, but you, Margaret, you already seem pretty self aware to me. You know what happened to you. you, you and it, that's what talking does. It's, it makes you more self-aware. But if you actually want to, and then the spiritual work, I feel often, sometimes it may bypass. I think there's even a term actually, spiritual bypassing, where you, you're okay with everything. You go to this higher level and it's great and it's necessary. And I absolutely believe in it 100%. But then you don't actually deal with the trauma. And I think that's what Dave is here is, is, is telling us. Like we do the affirmations, we do the... Uh, law of attraction we do all kind of stuff but because we haven't dealt with a childhood trauma we've bypassed that 
Very it's cool. not really working the way it should be. So this is what RC and EFT do. They deal specifically with um, the root of the trauma in you know in your childhood, like Louisa and and Dave were saying. It's like the in between the way I see it. Talking therapy, great. You're self aware. Now what? You want to fix it. <laughs> if you want to fix it, RST and EFT get the root cause and change it. And yeah, whether you have colitis or some other bodily thing, it's an expression of suppressed emotions or suppressed trauma. Really, trauma gets stuck in the body. That's it. So it is expressed in all sorts of ways. Um, yeah, so that's how it that that's why it's better because it gets the root cause mm -hmm. and you. transforms it. Exactly. Couldn't have said, said it better, Dea. <laughs> <laughs> well, you said it great at first. <laughs> we just all said the same thing in different ways. <laughs> oh, uh, Dawn, you had a, a question there. Yeah, I'm totally like feeling what you guys are saying because um, I dealt with the childhood trauma like ever since I can remember. Um, I was just sick a lot as a kid and um, I developed Crohn's colitis. I have an ostomy. So definitely like something to deal with the symptoms helps, but to, I, I think I need to get with Dave again to do another section, but um, to definitely, cause like the last experience I had with him, I was dealing with some uh, things came up and I'm doing like counseling right now. And I totally get what you're saying with the talking because you can talk about it all day long, but, and it does like make you think of the things, but you actually like want to deal with the energy of it. Um, and the last time I had the session with Dave, um, me and my husband weren't really getting along the greatest and he, he's, uh, I wouldn't say alcoholic, but he likes, he has his own things. And uh, Dave gave me some work, homework to do. And we, me and my husband spent some time apart and then now it's like getting better. So we're working on it, but I just had to say something because I'm, I'm totally feeling like what you guys are saying. <laughs> Okay. Yeah. Uh, Kevin, yeah, you got a question also? Yeah, um, I do. So I've been kind of, um, it, it's bad that I haven't had a session with you yet, Dave, because um, Marissa Peer did a thing on um, um, at the Summit of Greatness a few years ago here in Columbus, and she talked about rapid transformational therapy. And she was one of the speakers that impressed me the most at, at the whole conference. And mm -hmm. my question, <laughs> I think there's two levels to the question. Can RTT work if you don't feel like you've had childhood trauma? And then part of me wonders, you know, I tell myself, well, I haven't had any childhood trauma, yeah. but I don't know, there may be some things that might have been childhood trauma. You know, when I was a kid, I was bullied some at school. And that's tra trauma right, right there, actually, uh, being bullied. And my dad would, you know, I, I read this book called How to Be an Adult and uh, by David Richo, and it was about, you know, dealing with grief. And the, the concept of the book was that poor choices we make as adults are rooted in unhealed childhood trauma. And the, the minister that assigned me to read this book after my dad passed away 11 years ago, I, I read it, went back to see him, and I said, I had a perfect childhood. You know, my, my, my mom was a stay-at-home mom. My dad was always off working somewhere. And then I kind of stopped and paused for a moment. And we kind of had a moment where like, oh, maybe that's my childhood trauma. I mean, I, don't, I didn't feel it at the time, but, you know, it, it makes me wonder if some of the things that, you know, that I feel are challenges today might be rooted in some of that. Right. Yeah, I don't think anyone had per perfect parents. You know, some some of us may ha have had a, a good good parents. You know, but m most mostly people my age. You know, our our parents were raised back in the uh, the uh, the oppression or World War II, and they were hard people. They were um, 
uh, all, all about uh, sur sur survival of, of, of the fittest, you know, and and um, and, and uh, that that that's what they taught us. Uh, that they're a kid, you know. You have to be tough to make it, you know. And yeah, it it it, it was a really uh, uh, negative way way to 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 do it live. You know, they ne never told us about about the power of positive thought or anything like like like, like that. that 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 you know. It it was always about you have to be tough to make it, you know. And if you aren't tough, you won't make it, you know. Yeah, and you know, law of attraction, what you put out, and everything. And I I feel like I put out plenty of love out in the world. I don't put negative vibes out in the world anymore, and. I mean, you know, Dave knows me pretty well and, you know, I've been single for four years and I put plenty of love out in the world. I keep drawing women in my world that don't really want to be with me and like, what the hell am I doing wrong? Where's the, you know, it feels like everything in my world is lining up almost just perfectly, but there's something, you know, Frank and I were standing outside of Alan's house like five or six years ago. And we were doing a meditation and Frank was like, you know, you're, you know, she's right around the corner. She's right around the corner. She's, you know, <laughs> she's getting ready for you. You're getting ready for her. I'm like, okay, what, <laughs> what else, what else do we need to do to get ready for each other? It's like, I'm ready. I'm ready. I know it. <laughs> ready, ready. <laughs> happening. Uh, yeah, yeah. I can visualize it, but it's not happening yet. Right. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Okay. Mm. So I don't know. Medita I you know, I do meditation. I do yoga. You know what else? Uh, oh, oh, I think you know. Once we put off that vibe, you know, uh, of I am happy. I am full of joy every day, and it doesn't matter if, if I uh, I have the right partner or whatever. You know, I'm happy and I'm full of joy every day. You know, uh, a a good partner will show up. Uh, that she'll pick up on your vibe you know and show them that say wow something different about kevin there you know he's <laughs> he, he's not your uh, uh, or, or ordinary guy who has all, all these problems you know and, and will just use me you know and, and um yeah so then you, you just have to put on off that vibe all the, the time you know which, which take takes some work you know because th things in life will drag us down you know um but um yeah 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 i i think that's what we have to do anyway you know just put all, uh, out that vibe of happiness and, and joy you know no ma ma matter what's going on in our life you know i'd love yeah. to contribute a uh, comment yeah. to exactly what you're talking about yeah and Dave, what you said there is so powerful. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Um, if we're putting out a feeling, one of the reasons affirmations in, of, in and of themselves aren't terribly successful, if we hold an underlying belief that uh, love is not available to me or I'm not enough, the affirmation will not override that energy we're actually putting out right. and what i've come across lately which was kind of really eye-opening was if for example uh, kevin for yourself if you were to emanate i am loved in any general capacity you can find it already there in your life so don't be too specific because you want to open that energy that's in you I am loved. And that is what's going to draw um, that which you want, because it's getting away from, I don't have a partner. So this is just what I've been um, experiencing lately. And that, that little shift of finding satisfaction and joy and love or whatever it is or abundance in what you already have will bring more of it to you 
That's the ironic thing because I, I, I definitely believe in abundance and I, I've made that switch over the last two or three years that I, I see I see plenty of abundance. I have more than I need. I share. I, I mm-hmm. no doubt in my life, there's no doubt in my mind that I, I am loved. There's, there's plenty of love in my life. There's plenty of everything in my life, you know, just there's no partner, but I don't really see that as like, I'm lacking a partner. It's just, I would like to have a partner mm-hmm. and I'm, <laughs> I feel like it's overdue, you know, but it, it's not like I'm not, I'm not thirsty and like, you know, you know, it's not like that, but it's just like, okay, well, come on universe. She's coming (laughs) or he, whatever your partner's choice is. I know Frank told me that five or six years. (laughs) Frank told me that outside of out. Some of you know who Frank is, but Frank told me this years ago. (laughs) And Abraham Hicks, that's the one that Dawn just mentioned. And, And her message is, so, and I love it because I find it really raises that energy in yourself. And I printed one of her quotes out, take the time to line up with energy first and action becomes inconsequential. And so just keep doing that, emanating that I am loved and I am love because that's the going to give you the best possible outcome. Because I saw this play out in my life very recently where I started to shift the way I characterized my life, where the gaps that I didn't have weren't getting filled. And something that I became aware of decades ago and I hid was this ability to perceive energy and being beyond the physical realm in the presence of a minister from the church who came to remove a ghost from our house. That's how it came about. And I buried it and it woke up the other day and a person came into my life suddenly out of the blue that actually can see and vibrates at that same place where she, she gets that energy. And I've not had anybody in my life who's understood that about me. And then the moment I sort of released it, she showed up. And I thought, oh, that's really interesting because I stopped longing for the connection of somebody who got me. And I just decided this is who I am. And she appeared. Maybe they're already there, but they can't be seen by us until we remove a filter in front of ourselves. I don't know. I'm just speculating about that. But She's in my blind spot. That's it. <laughs> it be. I mean, I don't know, right? We don't know how mysteriously all of these things work, but theoretically, everything is already there. It's already manifest. It's just a matter of us peeling another layer off in order for us to be able to access it. I agree. Because you're already, you already emanate a very uh, beautiful energy like you have a real softness and an openness about you and it's already palpable well, thank you I feel like I don't know maybe it's just that maybe I need to finish this book I mean I, I feel like I'm kind of stuck with the uh, you know maybe that's where I'm stuck in life is that I, that, that I want to let this out and I had a weird dream last night that was like an interesting idea that's um so the book i'm trying to write the book i am writing is a is a self-help book and i had a dream overnight that i was going to write a fiction book and this wild story came about (laughs) and i and i i made like i spent five minutes writing it all out after i woke up this morning before i you know forgot it in the haze of of waking up and i just wonder if maybe this creative thing is i mean creativity is sacral chakra so love is also sacral chakra right and or you know and maybe that yeah maybe there's something maybe the book needs to be released and then that opens the blockage and then you know everything else flows after that maybe but so if you did a session with dave on being stuck because the way RTT is most effective and EFT Mm -hmm. is everything else is great, but it doesn't go to your subconscious. 
And that's what RTT and EFT does. It goes straight to your subconscious. It bypasses all the filtering. And that stuckness is probably something he could guide you through and past. Awesome. Because yeah. I also want to get up every morning and run because this year, instead of walking the New York City Marathon, I want to run it. So I need to get started practicing. I've got a lot of things that are I need to get unstuck from. Anyway, thank you for hearing me out. Thanks for saying that. Thank you. Great, great, uh, great uh, co comments there, Gita. I think that's a great idea. I just wanted to say that you can get work on what it is really. Sometimes with RTT, I think the beauty of it is you, even if you come to a session with, I don't know what it is. I don't know even what I want to work on. You can actually find that. And, and Dave is brilliant at that. He's just so intuitive. And I don't know, he's connected to something else. <laughs> for sure. He's great at getting right straight to it and really changing it for you. So even if you're not sure what it is and the energy levels and the, you know, the getting and running. I think that's even your website, Dave, right? That's exactly the kind of things you talk about. That's, um, so yeah, whether it's the love or the book, um, yeah, he can, he can definitely unleash that for you. And what, another thing I wanted to say is when I feel, and I'm, I'm not an expert in law of attraction, but I feel that sometimes when we really, we think we're so aligned and we say, okay, I want this, I want this, I want this, I want this right now. And I think Abraham Hicks talks about that as well. Like when you really want it and focus on it, you put some, you put resistance. So, and I think she says, just follow your joy or maybe other teachers say, it. I don't know where I heard it, but you just follow whether if the book feels right, then do that. If it feels right to go out and, you know, have fun and do that. If whatever feels right whatever you brings you joy right now that's the trail of i think someone calls it the breadcrumbs of excitement you follow that trail and that's what brings you to exactly to be aligned with yourself and to be aligned with your true path and when you're not looking from a different you know when you're not looking for someone then they appear out of nowhere maybe you're looking in the wrong places like other people here are saying you're just looking looking and she's there waving <laughs> you know so yeah, just follow your highest joy. I think that's what um, it comes down to with the law of attraction. And then also, yeah, of course, release. And if, if you're doing it, if you're doing everything already and it's still, it's not working, then probably there's something there which requires some RTT or EFT work to release that negative, you know, the um, kind of the block or whatever's holding you back, so. All right. All right. I'm gonna stop talking now. I promise. <laughs> uh, we're gonna have to move on here. Um, why don't we do a few mini sessions? Like, uh, how about if I I I, I do a, 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 a mini part part math group set a set session for all of you, and then then I I I do a mini uh, EFT session. The uh, tapping, um, uh, RTT is a little hard hard to do a um, um, uh, a, a mini set 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 session on the because uh, the uh, av average R RTT set session lasts for like three hours, you know, so it's kind kind of hard to uh, you know um, pare pare that down to some something short, you know. But uh, e EFT and uh, heart math, you can um, shorten those down quickly and uh, easily, you know? All right, so, sound good, everyone? Okay. Yeah, let, let's do a heart math technique here. It's called quick uh, co coherence. And what they're really, really deep on is uh, co coherence be, be between your heart and, and your mind. So how, how to do, do that is, first of all, put your, your hand on, on your heart. Breathe in slowly and deeply. About four seconds for the inhale and about four seconds for the exhale. And do that again, slowly and easily 
and close your eyes and then uh, visualize something that brings you a lo lot of joy. Just visualize that right now as you're breathing in slowly and easily. It can be like a favorite pet. It can be like um, so someone you really love and so someone who re really loves you. And just vi visualize that person or vi visualize that pet or visualize that uh, the event back in, in your life where you were really happy and really full of joy. And it just opened your heart. And at, at, as you uh, visualize either that person or that pet or that event right now, which opened your heart, it'll just open your heart again. So you're breathing in slowly and gently. And keep your mind focused on that event or that person or that pet. And as you do that, your heart and your mind will, will, will just be in coherence, which will be like a, a deep meditative state. But it, it'll be a little, little bit different than, than most deep uh, meditative states because you'll, you'll be feeling joy. You'll be feeling love at the same time. And as you're feeling love and as you're feeling joy at the same time that, that you're in, in that deep meditative state, it puts your heart in, and your mind into coherence. And when you, know, you can stay in coherence over long periods of time, it has a very healing effect on your body and your mind your whole life. And it, it can even make you very uh, intuitive, even, by being in coherence or, or uh, by, by being in a coherent state, I should say, over long periods of time. And just continue to practice that over and over, being in a coherent state, having your heart chakra open at the same time you're meditating. And that's the uh, quick uh, coherence method. And how, how does that make everyone feel as you're doing that? <laughs> Thumbs up for Kevin. Okay. And now we'll try one, one called um, the emotional freedom technique, and that involves tapping. Now let's all think of some something that we, we all have a, a problem with right now. Some something we're all generally experiencing as a group, which has all of our lives stressed out right now. Whether that's a job or lack of money, the uh, it's stuff that's on the news right now, all, all the stress that's on the, the news right now. Well, what is something that stresses us all out right now as a group? Can, can we think of something to work on right now? Anyone? You mentioned work. I'm overworked right now. <laughs> Okay. Yeah, there's one one vote for 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 work. Does anyone else want want want, want to vote for work? Yeah, yeah. Um, I when you said something for everybody without yeah. knowing everybody's status, uh, I I already chatted a message of the war. The war. Yeah. Okay. All right. Yeah. That does uh, a, 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 a affect us. It's uh, overseas, but uh, you know, it, it, since since we're all one, you know, e even though it's happening over there, it's ha happening to us also. You know, here, you know, because pe people are really stressed out there. Pe people are homeless. Pe 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 people are be being killed because you know, of the war o over there. You know, and that, that affects us here also. Especially if like, we're, we're watching the news, the, then it affects us more. You know, it it's stress. You know, it's stress in in our world. It it shows us that our world is 
uh, not, not a perfect place at all, you know. So that's one more, more thing we, we could tap on. Is there anything else? Lack of money, uh, Rachel says, yes, lack of money. Yeah, wonder, wonder if, if I could get all those, those in one statement. Okay, and, and then in, in, uh, in, in the EFT, you'll, you'll do some, something called the, the uh, set, setup statement. And, and the uh, set, setup says statement here could be, and you'll start tapping on the side of your hand like this. They uh, call that the, 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 the uh, karate chop point. Even though I feel all stressed out, <laughs> Because of my job and a lack of money and, and the war, I deeply and completely love myself and accept myself. And say, say that a few more times. Even though I feel all stressed out. Uh, Even though. Uh, uh, yeah, I think think uh, there's too too many people uh, talking at once. So, uh, yeah, if if uh, you just Think, think that thought in your mind right now, even though I feel all stressed out because of my job, stressful, having a lack of money is stressful, and the situation in the world is stressful. Even though I have all this going on, I completely love myself and accept myself and forgive myself. And say it a few more times, even though I have all this stress because of my job and a lack of money and all the stuff that's going on in the world right now with the war and all, all the rest of the stuff that's going on. I completely love myself and accept myself and forgive myself. And one more time, even though I have all this stress because of my job and because of a lack of money and because of all of these stressful things that's going on in the world right now, like the war and everything else, I completely love myself and accept myself and forgive my, myself. And then the next place to, to a tap is on, on the top of your eye, kind of um, near your, your nose, right, right on that bony ridge. Tap there and, and sh shorten your statement down now. All the stuff that's going on, my job, lack of money, all, all the stuff that's going on in the world, all the stuff that's going on right now. Life is so stressful. And then tap, tap at the edge of your eye on that bony ridge right there. I kind of disappeared there and back. Tap on, on that bony ridge right there. All the stuff on, on my job, all the stress on, on my job, all this stress from a lack of money. I don't have the, enough money. But my job has me all stressed out too. And I keep disappearing too. <laughs> And also all this stuff that's going on in the world, the war and the e economy and politics here in the U.S., which is a joke. Uh, all this stuff that's going on, I can, um, all the stressful stuff. And then down the bottom of the, the eye, my job, my job is so stressful and lack of money, don't have enough money. I'm all stressed out over that and all, all this stuff that's going on in the world right now has made me all stressed out, especially if, you know, and it, if I watch the uh, news, the news is just full of stress every night. And now be a low the nose. My job has me all stressed out, lack of money right now and all the stressful stuff going on in the world right now all this stressful stuff going on in the world right now in my job. And now uh, below the lower lip and above the chin, all this stuff that's going on in my life right now, job problems, lack of money, all this other stressful stuff that's going on in the world right now has me all stressed out. And now under the collarbone, all this stuff has made me all stressed out with my job and lack of money, don't have the, enough money, I'm not working at the place that I really want, want to be working at. And all this stuff that's going on in the world just has me really scared right now. Kind of frightening all, all, all this stuff that's going, going on. P people being shot 
in uh, in uh, stores and in uh, in in schools, grade school kids being shot right now. Really stressful, really stressful right now. And then under the, the arm, my job has let me all stressed out and uh, lack of money and all this stuff that's going on in the world. All the stuff that's going on in my life and in the world. And then top of the head, all this stuff that's going on in my job, lack of money and I don't like my, my job. My job is too stressful and all this stuff that's going on in, in the world also. It's just all too stressful. And then stop, take a deep breath. That, that was one, one round. And just from doing that one round, you should feel quite a bit less stressed out over the, all, all those things that we, we were talking about stress you out right there. Just from doing, doing that one round, which took what? Um, two minutes, three, three minutes or, or so. But uh, yeah, that, that's a, 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 a really short demo of uh, EFT and, and how uh, you know, EFT works. Now, 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 if you were, were to do an hour long session, you know, de dealing with, with some problems you, that uh, you've had in, in your life and, and you may, may have had for quite a few decades, EFT could solve quite, quite a bit, bit of that, could, can t take you back, back into the root cause of, of the problem also. So, so, so that's one uh, very, uh, very powerful technique there, uh, EFT. Uh, uh, RTT is kind of harder to do a uh, demo with because RTT se sessions can last for three hours. But as uh, anyone who has had an RTT session w with me can attest, that's uh, three hours well spent having a, um, a uh, RTT session. Okay, so how are pe people feeling now that we we've done that short demo? Is uh, everyone feeling just a little better? One th thumbs up from Daya there. Anyone else? Two th thumbs up. And Dawn, thumb up. Okay. And Gita, thank you. Okay. I love that heart coherence exercise, Dave. It was, I've never done it just in that context and i found when i did that mm -hmm. there were two people i was very 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 angry annoyed with upset cost me hundreds of thousands of dollars wow yes and in that moment i forgave them mm -hmm. and have let it go you forgave them just by doing that one just <laughs> just that one thing. That one simple technique. It's amazing. It's amazing. Yeah. <laughs> All right. And anyone else want to comment or anything? Anyone else? I like the heart thing. Mm -hmm. the, the, that was really good. Uh, yeah, the I'm not saying the EFT session wasn't very good either, but but I I've not done that before yeah. either, and I've done an EFT and the the EFT session I did with Dave was really amazing. Thank you. I I had a, it was it was such fun as well. Uh -huh. He makes everything so much fun to do. Thank you. Uh, it's not like therapy. <laughs> no, it's good therapy. That's what I'm saying is, and RTD is fun. It, you know, certain aspects of the therapy are really good because obviously you're getting, you're releasing lots of the rubbish that you don't want. But yeah, that heart thing, that was really good. It made me feel really uplifted. Thank you. Yeah, and it's quick. Mm -hmm. it's, you know, yeah, it is. It was really, that's why I felt it was really smiling. Right. Thank you. Yeah, okay. Anyone else? Yeah, thanks, Dave. It was great. Um, as always, and I love the heart thing too. I do that too. It's it's amazing. The combination of the two is amazing. And I think it's very really impressive that Gita let go of something so huge just doing that. I'm well impressed. 
uh, quick, quickly, yeah. Yeah, it's the power of it, yeah. And of course, in a longer full session, you can get let go of, like you're saying, Dave, you can let go of so much so quickly with EFT. And when you add the heart coherence to it, yeah. brilliant. It's a brilliant combination. It's a brilliant combination, I think. Yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah. And for some pe people who they, they just have to go back to uh, uh, childhood, you know, we, 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 we can do uh, RTT -T -T -T, uh, uh, se sessions on them also. You know, and take them back back to their childhood, and help help them to root out traumas. You know that uh, happened back back in childhood also. Can I go back and make some different decisions back in about 1988? <laughs> <laughs> yes, exactly. Yeah, or 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 to re realize, you know, in the big picture, it doesn't matter. You know. <laughs> in the big picture, you know, it doesn't matter if we chose the wrong major in college, we uh, dated the wrong people, we married the wrong people, we uh, took those wrong jobs and then that, that we shouldn't have. In the big picture, it doesn't matter. And in, in the big picture, all that really matters is where is our heart and our mind at right now, you know? Yeah, because because if, if our heart and, and our mind are in a, a good good place, you know, then then our future will uh, turn out well. I think you know. All right, that's all I've got, got folks. Does anyone else have any more questions or anything? No, just to say thank you very much for taking the time and sharing your um, your gift with uh, all of us. It's so appreciated. Thank you. Uh, yeah, and, and uh, if uh, anyone else wants any more uh, d d details on uh, me and, and what, what I do, my uh, website is davescarbo.com. Um, my e email is davescarbo at Dave Scarborough.com. Um, oh, what else? Um, and um, uh, uh, yeah, or or if 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 if, if uh, you'd uh, like 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 to have a uh, set session here with with Dia, she, she she she's my coach. You know, she she knows quite quite a bit also. So put put in a, in a plug for Dia there also. <laughs> all right mm -hmm. no one have any, any any more questions so so i hope to to uh, see, see you next time i'm going to try to to do a a workshop one once a, a month if, if i can okay hey, do you do your singing bowl meditations anywhere these days um i haven't uh, done those for a while but i i could still do them yeah Matter of fact, yeah, I love do doing those. <laughs> uh, that, that would be <laughs> that would be highly enjoyed. Highly enjoyed, yeah. Yeah, I've been missing your singing bowl meditations for a long time. Miss those singing bowls, Vivia. <laughs> <laughs> no, th thank you, Kevin. Yeah, I, matter of fact, I got one here. Here we go. <laughs> It's making you disappear. <laughs> Magic. All right. Thank you, everyone. Mm -hmm. um, a, a great workshop here. And yeah. to see you all next time. Mm -hmm. Thanks, Dave. Bye. Bye. Thanks a lot, Dave. Good night, everyone. Thank you. Mm -hmm.